Well, I've just managed to grab David Sable after having done a, a sellout performance here at uh, Stream Commerce. And luckily nobody saw you grab me because I, I don't want to say anything, but like there was a little hashtag something there. Well, look on, look, look on the social networks where we can not see it soon. David, you know, we've been talking quite a lot about the whole notion of, of experience here. Are we all going completely mad? Because the whole essence of retail has always been about experience. That is pretty amazing, isn't it? Like, you see, when you think about that, if you think back 150 years or so, right, to the beginnings of Selfridges, Selfridges is all about experience. That's all it was. All retail is about experience. Sears and Roebuck, even the original catalog, was about experience because back in the day, think about this, back in the day, the Sears and Roebuck catalog in the 1800s was about yay thick, beautiful illustrations. It would come to you in the middle of the winter in the Midwest of America, these people were living in these tiny little sod houses. That was their entertainment. It was called the wish book because that's what all they thought about all winter. The interaction that they had with that book was amazing. They'd cut out the little illustrations and put them on the wall. So, so what, do, what do we lose? We, we what lost do we this. lose? We and lost how? it. We lost it because we got caught in digibabble. We got caught in the trap of believing that digital is the end all and be all as opposed to being the the absolute integral part of everything that we do. Digital is everything, but not everything is digital. So there's nothing today in our world that doesn't have touch digital in some way. Even print, your physical print comes from digital sources and digital files. The problem is somehow we translated this into thinking that everything, we talk about immersive digital experiences. What the hell is that? I you have an immersive digital experience? And do you really want one? I mean, Well, maybe you do, maybe you do. I can see you could have an immersive experience in an incredible VR, and I've had them. I mean, I've tried some VR that's not commercial yet, that literally I got off, I was soaked through my shirt, I was sweating so much, it was so amazing. But the truth of the matter is that in and of itself, it is a great way to learn, it's a great way to be entertained. It can be immersive, like a movie can be immersive, but there's nothing more immersive than trying on a freaking shirt. Like that's immersive. It's immersive going into a restaurant and smelling and seeing and tasting and feeling and talking to the chef and having a lot of people around you, adding to the atmosphere, the ambiance, if you will. So I think we lost that. The beauty is, we're getting it back. So, so how do we reframe ourselves and put the experience at the center, and I suppose digital as part of the enablement of what that experience is? So I would say, how do we put it at the center? We heard it here today at, the, at Stream Commerce, because when Google and Amazon get up in front of the entire crowd of hundreds of people and say, don't start with digital, don't start with technology, start with people, like, it blew my mind. I was so excited, I literally got out of my, stick, my chair and started to cheer. So when, when the greats... I wonder when, what that noise was, actually. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> no wonder you grabbed it. But that was a, that, that's the thing, right? So I think that that's how we get it back. We get it back by understanding that the people who drive the greatest digital enablement in the world are the very people who are saying, unless you, have, unless you put real-life experience around there, look at Amazon. Amazon is literally going to open stores in six figures this year. So between the grab-and-go, between the pop-ups, between um, the bookstores, which are great, and each one is different. Each one has a different actual experience, but the experience is built around the consumer, the customer, and the experience in that particular environment for that need. So, for example, if you go in the grab-and-go, it's all food. You just want to grab-and-go. They can't upsell you anything. You grab it, you have need, you go, you're out. You get a book, you go into a bookstore, they have other things too. They don't want you walking out with just one, and chances are you're very susceptible to a second purchase and even a third purchase. Now, you mentioned um, in your session the whole notion of serendipity, and serendipity is just a, a, just a wonderful retail sort of experience. It does transform why you've gone into the store. It does help you upsell. How do we get serendipity back? I mean, or, or is it impossible? Is serendipity serendipity? No, we're, serendipity, we help create serendipity. Serendipity is a state of mind. I think it's in our human DNA. We like it. The wheel was discovered because of serendipity. I think everything, serendipity is critical to our human form. That is who we are. It's in our DNA. So how do we get it back? We get it back just by understanding great retail. So, for example, imagine 
if you went into Harrods food court and instead of having all of that stuff just sort of put all over the place, it was compartmentalized and you went from one page to the other and you had to go through a door to get into the next place, you wouldn't buy anything. No, no. But because you walk around and you're smelling and you're seeing and you're tasting, that's the serendipity. And the truth is, it creates synapse jumps because maybe you're tasting the smoked salmon in one place and that's really all you came in for. And if you're online, that might be all you would buy because that's what you needed and it's efficient, you're quick, you're out. But now that you've done it, you notice when you came in, there was great bread in the front and somebody gave you a little taste of it and you can still smell it. You run back there to get that and then you think, oh, wait a second, I need capers. And before you know it, you walk out with a full basket of stuff. That's serendipity. That doesn't exist anywhere. And I don't think we'll ever be able to create that because all of the, oh yeah, if you bought this, you'll like this, is just not the same. That's not serendipity because I'm telling you that that's what you're going to like. You're not letting me discover it. So in this uh, algorithmic world that we're sort of uh, heading into, do you think uh, human rhythms are going to beat algorithms? Will human rhythms be algorithms? I think we're all algorithms. Uh, like We've always worked by algorithms. We just didn't know it. We thought that they were equations or we thought that they were models of things. We can, we've always done that. We've always modeled. And I think, I think we humans do have algorithms that are in us, right? So we stay away from things. There's we, we, danger, love, light. All of these things are programmed into us with algorithms and we learn, we talk about machine learning, we have millions and millions of years of actual human learning, which is amazing, right? So we're never gonna lose that, but I think the beauty that we have that machines don't have is that synapse jump. We, we, we jump, we don't need to have that line. Sort of linear. We don't of, need the yeah. line between one thing and the other. It's not like if you do this, do that. So no matter how the AI is programmed, that's that's kind of what happens. Now, having said that, there's a famous book by Robert Heinlein called The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, where he talks, about, written in the 50s, interestingly enough, he talks about a computer called Mike. And so remember, this is in the 50s, he's talking about parallel computing. Like he even, It's amazing how he thought about these things. But anyway, the point is, it's a computer that one day they added one extra piece of hardware to, and it became sentient. Now, his view was that at some point, you pass this line, where the, the, just the sheer computing power creates life or creates thinking. And maybe that's possible. But until that happens, I think all of the, the, all the AI in the world will never quite match. Yeah, you can beat me at Go, great. But you're, that same computer is never going to make me buy the purple pants or the pink whales. I guarantee it. Well, it'd be very wise if you didn't, David, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were going to buy from you. That was a <laughs> yeah, hint, yeah. David. But, but. Well, for your birthday, I'll get something else. One last thing. I mean, you know, you speak to a lot of retailers. You're you know, an expert in retailing in your own right. You've got lots of grandchildren. so clearly I you're, buy a lot. I don't know if I'm an expert, but I buy a lot. <laughs> you sit on the board of one of the uh, U.S.'s largest retailers. Are you, are you uh, enthusiastic about... Uh, retailing going forward? I am. I'm very enthusiastic about retail going forward. I, first of all, we're seeing it. The board you're referring to is American Eagle. We had a great um, Christmas time. We had a great holiday period. I think that, that one of the things that distinguishes us is, in fact, we stay true to the core of the brand. So we spend a lot of time thinking about the American Eagle brand and the Airy brand, which is our new brand for, for women. Um, it's an amazing brand. You, you can read about it. I, I we really recommend for everybody to look it up because it really is a great story of marketing. It's a digital story. It's a physical story. I mean, it's a story of great product, great discovery. I think one of the things that we talked about was that today, because of digital, we can discover things quicker, easier, learn a lot. But then for consideration, I want to go try it on. I want to see the store. I want to smell it. I want to taste it, whatever. So discovery and consideration have collapsed the funnel, and I think stores like ours, like American Eagle and Aerie, give you that opportunity. So yeah, I think that there, there's a lot. Casper, Warby Parker, Bonobos, Away, they're all opening stores just for that reason. So I think what we're going to see is that undifferentiated, big box, vanilla, crappy retail is dead, 
undifferentiated, huge malls where every third store is exactly the same are dead, but are being replaced in neighborhoods and other malls, by the way, where it's just the curation of stuff is so differentiated and so relevant and so interesting allowing for that serendipity that we all want. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bullish. Well, that's a great place to end. David, it's always a pleasure and, and a delight. It, and it's always good to see you, Ted. I'll give you a big Thanks hug. Thanks very much <laughs> indeed.